Hello everybody, welcome to Boxing Science. In this video, I'm going to be covering three exercises to increase the snap of a punch. Now let's go into the mechanics of a punch in action in terms of muscular activation. What happens is that as the increase in muscle activation upon initiation of the punch in action, as the fist has been delivered towards the target, the body relaxes and this is what creates that speed and that whip-like action. And then as we get towards coming into contact with the opponent or the bag or the pad, what happens is the increase in muscular activation, the whole body to create that snap. If we don't have that snap and we're pushing through, we won't be able to deal with that impact forces and it'll reduce that amount of punch force that's being delivered. What this requires is global stiffening of the muscles, the arms, core and glutes. So try and improve this is all about skill and technique and obviously timing. You can get really, really strong, but if you're not relaxed, firing from the shoulder and being able to snap upon hitting the target and hitting the opponent, you won't be able to create that stiffness effect. Main thing is skill and technique, but there's a lot of different things that you can do in the strength and conditioning room to be able to have an impact on increasing the snap of a punch. The first one is increasing strength, just generically, but then you can do isometric exercises such as floor press, isometric hip thrusts, split stance RDLs and stuff like that to then transfer the isometric strength into the snap and also working towards the end range, whether that's uh, doing partial range lifts to overload the trunk and to overload strength and ten all body tension, but also accommodating resistance adding bands that increase the resistance going all the way through the action to accelerate and create that stiffness towards the end range because this is where we're most likely coming into contact with opponents and the targets if you're on the bags and pads. The third one is punch specific exercises where we look to try and overload that isometric tension towards the end range of the punch. These three exercises that we're going to take you through now really highlight kind of being able to create that isometric tension through the arm, core and glutes in a punch specific action. So these are the three exercises that I'm going to be taking you through today. This exercise is isometric punch holds. This is a very specific exercise that we use as part of boxing warm-up, but also a part of speed and taper phases, and especially using it as part of the pre-fight warm-up. And what this does is creating that isometric tension in very specific joint angle movements that are transferring to boxing. So we're working on straight arm shots and bent arm shots. This is potentiating the muscles but also getting them joints ready to deal with them high impact forces in a boxing specific fashion. We're going to start off in a boxing stance. Uh, Tommy, can you just turn orthodox just yeah. for everybody that's watching? Yeah. We're going to start off with a lead hand. So in a jab and we're firing into that hand. I'm putting my body weight in. Tommy's tensing up through his arms, his core and his glutes. Then he's going to transfer into the backhand, get that full rotation and really driving through. Some of the key mistakes that I've made, they'll act like it's a pushing action. So go there, hold, and then push in. What Tommy's doing really well to start off with is, is nice and relaxed, fires it in fast and creates a snap at the end. So there, and then even encourage Tommy to go a little bit more. Three, two, one. And you're holding for three to five seconds, depending on the athlete. Obviously, when you're doing it fast like that, be prepared, especially when you're working with professional fighters, that they are actually going to put that force. But it's so much better to get that because it's actually a realistic thing to do to get your muscles activated and potentiated, ready to go into the pads. So well, let's do that again, Tommy, just for the camera. So snap it in. Three, two, one. Get that full rotation, making sure it's not an arm punch. And then we go into our bent arm shots. Three, two, one. So what Tommy's doing well here is rotating his hips in, he's tensing up his core, his shoulders, and his glutes coming into it. Also, it's important to get the angle right. So if I go there, you want to be, be specific to where he's probably going to land the punch. So we go towards that mid range. If we go there, here, it's putting his shoulder in a vulnerable position. If we go all the way here, it's putting his body weight. It's not as realistic. So if we go here, Drive it in three, two, one. Then we'll take that back hip into the hook. Three, two, one. Then we'll dip down into an uppercut. Three, two, one. And there. Three, two, one. Fantastic. Good work. So, I would use this in terms of in a speed or a tape session. I do the bandage shadow boxing. I do three sets of that. And in 
between these sets, I do these punch isometric holds. In pre-competition, it depends on the athlete, how strong they are, how accustomed they are to this movement. I'd at least do one set on each punch before they go onto the pads. But for people that are more accustomed to it, I'll start doing three sets, just as I would do in a taper session, splitting up the banded shadow box with some isometric punch holds just before they go onto the pads. This exercise is a landmine punch with isometric hold. So this is really training that ability to produce a lot of force, relax, and then snap at the end range of the movement. And let's just demonstrate a normal landmine punch. So pushing off that rear leg, rapidly rotating the hips and trying to create that stiffness at the top. What Tommy's doing really well here is accelerating from the bottom, relaxing and making sure that I'm rattling it there and it's stiff through core, glutes, and through the upper limb as well. So what I can do to create a little bit more snap at the end range is supply some resistance right at the end of the movement. So I'm pushing down on the bar and if Tommy isn't creating that tension through his upper limb, his core, and his glutes all, what's gonna happen is gonna push straight down straight away, okay? So he's got a really tense up. How you apply that force is you've got to snap yourself as a coach. So you're there, two, one, yeah and you're applying that force there. Too many times where I'll see coaches like stand off and then just go and just push against the bar. You've got to put your body weight in, create that snap at the end range. Two, one. I do this with athletes, about five reps on each side for three sets as part of an extended warm up. This exercise is the med ball punch iso hold. So Tommy is gonna be like, just away from the wall, it's gonna use a medicine ball, okay? And it's gonna push into the wall, a straight backhand, just stepping a little bit more Tommy, so you get a little bit more of a joint angle there. And it's just basically gonna rotate his hips, tense up his core, and his arms are gonna be driving through. Three, two, one. You can hold it anywhere between three and five second holds. So five seconds, you go probably more submaximal. So don't go as hard, Tommy. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. And then you can go for more maximum efforts with three second holds. Ready? Drive. Three, two, one. What's important with this is to not just go start from here and then just push into it, go from a relaxed state into really driving into that snap. Okay, so let's go, Tommy. So you start off, the hips slightly turned out, Torso slightly turned out and also the foot. And then we're gonna create that snap by driving into that wall. Let's go. Let's go. Three, two, one. And this is where to really create force into this action. Now, most people will have access to medicine ball. If you don't, obviously try and pop a cushion against wall, I would say open palm. If it's a little bit too stressful on the wrist, you can go with the fist, obviously make sure that it's cushioned. But most people got a med ball, so you can do it with that. But if you're wanting to create some feedback, we actually got this dynamometer that we use with quite a lot of our athletes to create a little bit of speed and intent into that. So we're looking for that peak force as soon as you can, Tommy. Let's go. Three, two, one. Okay, see, so 21. So I'd say the joint angle that Tommy's using here is a bit suboptimal because his arm is higher and he's not getting his body weight behind. So if you just drop that arm down a little bit, Tommy, start with your hips slightly turned out and then drive into it. Let's go. Three, two, one. Yeah, so 30 then. Yeah, so 30 kilos. So he's increased it by nine kilos just with that little tweak. Now, if you don't have access to this, which is a couple of hundred pounds, just use a cheap pair of weighing scales from Amazon and you can give an athlete some feedback. It's not 100% accurate, but if you can just drive it in, Tommy, and create that effort. Three, two, one. So I saw a 26 there. Let's go again. Three, two, one. Seeing 28.8. So just using that piece of feedback there is getting more out there, size, which will help optimize adaptations. Go for the five second hold, sub maximal. I do anywhere between three and five reps or do three second holds where you're going for 100% maximum effort. Using this as a feedback tool will be fantastic. And we're gonna go for between three and five reps on each side of that one too. Okay guys, so that's three exercises to improve the snap, the punch, improve it with skill and technique first, 
then generic strength exercises, along with the use of isometrics and potentially partial range lifts and accommodating resistance. But well, these punch specific exercises can really help get that speed and that timing into some strength exercises. So if you've got any questions about the exercises that we've used today, please leave them in the comment box below. And hopefully see you on the next video of Boxing Science.